Hello, and welcome to um, our webinar on Dispelling the Lies, Part 8. Yeah, it's been eight weeks now that we've been doing uh, uh, Dispelling the Lies. Uh, the Lord has a lot to say about it. He doesn't want you to walk in deception and believe lies. So let's go to the Father in prayer. Father, we thank you, Lord. We just give you glory, honor, and praise. And uh, Father, as as we invite you into speaking forth the message that you have uh, given to me, I yield myself to you. I send forth now the angels to go forth and minister to your people as you are bringing forth this message to them and open up their eyes, ears, and hearts to uh, really hear what you're saying and receive it. Give them revelation knowledge about this. And we just give you glory, honor, and praise. We put the blood of Jesus, destroy every plan of the devil. Yes, in this webinar, part eight of Dispelling the Lies, we are continuing on the topic, Truth versus the Lies, part two. Now, the overall series is Dispelling the Lies, and we're in part eight, but then we are into part two of the topic of it, um, ver truth versus the lies. We will focus on deception and how one can go from believing the truth but end up acting on the lie instead of the truth. Or how can one believe a lie but switch from the lie to the truth? How can one never be deceived from standing on the truth? As we go forth in this webinar, really search your heart. This may mean the difference in spiritual life, heaven, or spiritual death, hell. First of all, what is deceive or deception? What is really meant by that? Well, the dictionary.com describes to deceive is to mislead by a false appearance or statement. Other words are trick, fool, falsify, scam, and snare, and hook. Deception means falsehood, trickery, hypocrisy, untruth, lying, and disinformation. So one is more of a verb causing you to deceive, and the other is believing the deception. So when are we when are talking when so when are we talking about truth versus lie excuse me about that what comes in the mix is deception look what eve said in genesis 3:13 and all the scriptures i'm mentioning in this webinar are from the amplified in genesis 3:13 and the lord god said to the woman what is this that you have done and the woman said the serpent beguiled, cheated, outwitted, and deceived me, and I ate. You see, in Genesis 3, verses 1 to 7, now the serpent was more subtle and crafty than any living creature of the field which the Lord God had made. And he, Satan, said to the woman, Can it really be that God had said, you shall not eat from every tree in the garden. Verse 2 says, And the woman said to the serpent, We may eat the fruit from the trees of the garden. Verse 3, Except the fruit from the tree which is in the middle of the garden, God had said, You shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. And in verse 4, the serpent said to the woman, you shall not surely die. See, this is what I'm saying. God's word is truth. You can always stand on. The enemy will always tell you the opposite. So that you know, surely, if you've read something in the word and you hear something different, that's the enemy talking to you to try to get you away from the truth. Notice that the enemy comes right after God told Adam and Eve, which tree not to eat from or touch it. Eve was standing on that truth, but after discussing it with the enemy, 
what God said, she became not so strong on that truth. First of all, who is the enemy who is the enemy to come and tell you or even discuss with what God says to you? What what is this? Him just coming to you and saying this. Well, you have to stop him. The minute he starts, shut him down. Get him, tell him no, get out of here. He will always tell you what is opposite from what God tells you and what the word of God tells you. Because he is the father of lies. And that is quoted in John eight forty four. Why are you entertaining a conversation with the enemy? Why? Just tell him to stop it. Just tell him, get out of here. You don't want to hear it. So as she continued later on in Genesis 3, she kept talking to the enemy. She traded the truth of what God said into the lie. The enemy told her and, dis- and she disobeyed God by eating the fruit she was not to eat. That is called deception. Exchanging the truth for the lie, the enemy deceived her. How can we stop it? Stand on God's word, truth, and stop the enemy in his tracks as he offers you to trade the truth for his lie by his deception. There are so many lies out there fueled by the enemy to keep you in bondage and eventually land you in hell after you die. People can read the word of God, believe it, stand on it, but here comes a tool of the enemy And one of his tools is a false prophet or a false teacher who tells people as they charm them and they put some laughter in there to contradict the word the people are believing. So the enemy will work through false prophets, false teachers, and even charm you a little bit. And you don't even realize that he's telling you things that contradicts the word that you just read or believed. If they take that, if those people take that bait of Satan, they have exchanged God's word for a lie from the enemy because they were deceived by a charmer who twists God's word. He was a tool of the enemy. In answering the disciples' question in Matthew 24, 3, this is what Matthew 24, 3 says, 23, 24, excuse me, verse 3. When will this take place and a sign of your coming and of the end, the completion, the consummation of the age? Jesus in Matthew 24, verses 4 to 5, answered them, Be careful that no one misleads you, deceiving you and leading you into error. Okay, so... There's where Jesus is saying, beware, you're believing something, but don't let somebody change it up and mislead you and deceive you into error. Verse five, for many, now listen closely, this is where the false prophets and the false teachers come. For many will come in on the strength of my name, appropriating the name which belongs to me saying, I am the Christ, the Messiah, and they will lead many astray. That's what happens. These false prophets, false teachers, that's what they will do. They will say they are from the Lord, but they're telling you lies. That's why you need to read your word and know the truth. And when a lie comes, you'll know. Verse 11, and many false prophets will rise up and deceive and lead many into error. Verse 13, but he who endures, it means endures that, that when you hear the truth and then you hear a lie, you, you, you dispel the lie. You, I'm not going to believe it. I'm just going to believe the truth. You keep standing on that. And, 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 and casting down the lie, then you will endure to then to the end and will be saved. Who, he who stands on God's word and reject 
and refuse to be deceived by the lies against God's word. How does deception come about through these false prophets? Well, in John seven eighteen, it says, He who speaks, now listen very closely. This is how you'll know. He who speaks on his own authority seeks to win honor for himself. So if you have see, go and see somebody speaking, and they're, they are thinking they're all that, and then some getting honor for themselves, that's one of a clue of a false prophet. They're speaking on their own authority and wanting to win honor for themselves. He whose teaching originates with himself seeks his own glory. In other words, when he is trying to, it, when the, the teaching originates with him, starts with him rather on the word, he is seeking his own glory. That's another clue that's a false prophet. But he who seeks the glory and is eager for the honor of him who sent him he is true, and there is no unrighteous falsehood or deception in him. So if a person is speaking to honor the Lord and honor the Lord and honor Jesus and honor God, he's speaking truth and there's no unrighteousness. He's not looking to say, see me, look at me, honor me, look how I'm, I'm something else. No, he's humble and he's speaking forth the word. So there you have it. These false prophets are seeking the glory for themselves with a possible look at me syndrome. When that happens, the truth is mixed with lies because they don't want to offend anyone. They may, they may lead people, cause people to want to love them, give them honor or money. So they don't want to offend anyone Oh, I can't offend them because then they won't love me. They won't honor me. They, they won't give me any money. You see what the motives are? It's, there's several motives here with these false prophets. When Jesus spoke the truth, it did offend people. These false prophets don't want to offend anybody. And um, in Matthew fifteen eleven, Jesus said, It is not what goes into the mouth of a man that defiles and dishonors him, but what comes out of the mouth, this defiles and dishonors him. Verse 12 said, Then the disciples came and said to Jesus, Do you know that the Pharisees were offended when they heard you say this? Because Jesus was speaking truth. Jesus wasn't looking for glory and honor and all this. He was looking to set the people free. He always spoke the truth. They may not have liked it, but if they love the truth, they wouldn't mind being offended. Truth will offend because the Father's desire is to take one from glory to glory, and that's in 2 Corinthians verse, uh, chapter 3, verse 18. The truth of God's word exposes lies so you can be set free. The key is, are you going to push that offense aside and say, no, I'm going to receive the truth no matter how, even though it, it, does, some, it does something to me, jars me a little bit, I know this is God's word, and I receive the truth because I want to be set free. In 2 Thessalonians 2.10, it states, And by unlimited seduction to evil, and with all the deception of wickedness, for those who are perishing, going to perdition, because they did, now listen to this, because, you know why? Because they did not welcome the love of the truth of the gospel. You have to love the truth no matter what. And if not, then you're going to fall in deception along with those who are perishing who feel the same way. So as, let me read this over again. 2 Thessalonians 2.10 And by unlimited seduction to evil and with all the deception of wickedness for those who are perishing, 
Why are they perishing? Because they did not. They had a choice. They did not welcome the love of the Father of the gospel so as to be saved. They were spiritually blind and rejected the truth that would have saved them. This is what I'm saying. Need I say more? Second Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 11 says, Therefore God, because they did not welcome the love of the truth of the gospel, God sent them upon them a misleading influence, a working of error, and a strange delusion to make them believe what is false. God said, okay, you don't love the truth? Then here. Here's a, uh, he sent uh, upon them a misleading influence of error. Second Th- Thessalonians 2.12 says, In order that all may be judged and condemned who did not believe in, who refused to adhere to, trust in and rely on the truth, but instead be of pleasure and unrighteousness. Let me read that one again. Second Thessalonians 2.12 In order that all may be judged and condemned. You're going to be judged and condemned because you did not believe in the truth. You did not. You refused. You did not want to hear to. You did not want to trust and rely on the truth. But you would rather pleasure, have pleasure in, in unrighteousness. Colossians 2.8 says, See to it that no one carries you off as spoil or makes you yourselves captive by their so-called philosophy and intellectualism and vain deceit, idle fantasies and plain nonsense, following human tradition, men's ideas of the material rather than the spiritual world. Just crude notions following the rudimentary and elemental teachings of the universe and disregarding the teachings of Christ the Messiah. So what it's saying here is in Colossians 2.8, don't let someone mislead you, take you off course with their philosophy and intellectualism and vain deceit. Idle fan- fantasies, fancies, and plain nonsense. They following human tradition, following men's ideas, just crude notions, following the teaching of this universe. And do by doing all that, they are disregarding the teachings of Christ the Messiah. We have to be on guard of how people interpret some things in the Bible. Yes, we are to love people, but we also need to tell them the truth of the gospel. Jesus said in John 16, 8, And when he comes, he will convict and convince the world and bring demonstration to it about sin, about righteousness, uprightness of heart and right standing with God, and about judgment. So when conviction comes... The Holy Spirit is showing a person where they need to repent. That conviction can come through a message, a person, the word. We need to search our hearts daily to repent and make sure we are in right standing with God. In the book of Luke, chapter 3, it describes John the Baptist. His whole ministry was telling people to repent. It's so important that 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 was his ministry, John the Baptist's ministry, the whole chapter of Luke Luke three, he wall, he went around and told people to repent. The blood of Jesus was shed to cleanse us of all our sins. For that to happen, we first need to repent so that we can be cleansed by the blood of Jesus. Now, did you know that you can offend God? Yes, you can. Here's a scripture that talks about that. And it also talks about what I just said about 
fully checking your salvation with fear and trembling. And uh, so listen to what this last scripture has to say. Philippians 2.12 says, Therefore, my dear ones, as you have always obeyed my suggestions, so now not only with the enthusiasm you would show in my presence, but much more because I am absent. He said, work out means to cultivate, carry out to the goal and fully complete your own salvation with reverence, awe, and trembling. You see, see what it says right there? Care, in other words, we have to keep always on target and keep ourselves in check that um, if there's a, if we're falling away or if there's anything there that we need to, re, excuse me, to repent of. So uh, we have to work out our own salvation with reverence, awe, and trembling that we are always in right standing with the Father. Self-trust with serious caution, tenderness of conscious watchfulness against temptation, timidly shrinking from whatever might, now get this, timidly shrinking from whatever might offend God. Okay, so we have to always be on guard and always working out our salvation with fear and trembling because we don't want to offend God and we don't want to discredit the name of Jesus. Um, I'm going to go through a prayer right now because you may have fell into those traps of some lies and believe things and I just want to lead you in a prayer about that and also if you don't know Jesus that's the beginning point of understanding the truth and walking in it so I'm going to lead you in a prayer of salvation and I'm also going to just pray with you uh, if you fell into that traps of lies that God wants to set you free from that so just say this after me father I believe that Jesus died on the cross for me. I repent of my sins. And I ask you, Jesus, come into my life and be Lord of my life. Thank you for dying on the cross for me. And I make you Lord of my life. Teach me how to walk in your ways. I surrender myself wholly and completely to you. Now, you have become a Christian, which means you you have given your life to God and now you're going to live for him rather than live your ways and because your ways would only lead you to hell. But now you have changed, changed lives and you now live in a Christian life unto the Lord and you have to keep yourself and, and watch, you know, Watch over the things that you do in your life. And if you've done something wrong, quickly repent to the Lord. Because we don't want to offend him and we don't want to discredit Jesus. Now, if you have gotten into traps uh, of lies with different things and you believed it, let's pray this prayer and we're going to deny those and we're going to break those off of our lives. So, Father... I believe that I have believed some lies, and I want to be set free of them. I repent of believing these lies, and I break agreement with them. And I just ask you, Lord, to take them from me and set me free. And from this point on, give me ears to hear and receive the truth and not ever a lie again. And I just thank you, Father. It's, I just give you glory and honor and praise because I desire to walk completely in truth and no lies at all because I don't want to be deceived. And you know the Lord has heard that prayer. You say it's the either prayer or both. You, you have, if you said one of the prayers or both of the prayers, the Lord has heard that. And you can say it with a sincere heart. He is right on the move to assist you and help you because he loves you very much well we're going to close in prayer right now and i'm so glad you were able to join us so um we just thank you father for being with us today 
And I, I just really felt you were ministering to your, to your people. And I believe that there are people out there that have truly taken this sincerely and have opened their hearts to follow you wholly and completely. So we just, we just ask you, Lord, to continue to lead and guide them as, as they go forth in their uh, life of truth and dispelling any lies in their life. And we just put the blood of Jesus over this message and the seeds that were sown in their lives. And we just thank you, Lord. We just give you glory, honor, and praise. And we thank you. Thank you, Father, for being with us today and going forth and being with these ones that have prayed today. We just give you glory, honor, and praise in Jesus' name. We'll see you the next time.